House is reportedly pushing for Democratic New York Governor David Patterson to drop out of the 2010 gubernatorial race. But with national issues such as health care reform and Afghanistan spiraling out of their control, why is the White House suddenly concerned with state politics or in some cases local politics? Well, on our panel this morning, Loretta Doan, a commentator for Federal News Radio, Dan Gilgoff is a senior writer for U.S. News and World Report, and Democratic political strategist Peter Feld. Join us live on the Kirby Couch. Morning. Peter, let's start with you. You're a Democrat. Uh, what is this Democratic White House doing? I, it's not very often when the president's people say, hey, governor, you, you have no chance of winning, so get out. Well, it hasn't happened very often publicly. I think you've seen on the Republican side, certainly, uh, when uh, I think Governor Swift of Massachusetts was in, uh, the Republicans were eager to see her step aside for Mitt Romney, who they thought was uh, a better candidate and somebody more likely to win. I think the, yeah, uh, that's oh, just, you're talking about Republicans in kind of a generic way. It wasn't like George Bush who said, "Hey, you got to get out." Well, they in made this sure case, it's a White House saying, "Hey, come well, on." Well, they made sure she it. stepped aside too. I mean, they like we got somebody who could do the job. I mean. I mean, I think in the case of New York, this is a blue state. Next year, we've got lots of other states to worry about that are not so blue. The last thing sure. we need to do is give the Republicans a free throw uh, and say, oh, here, we, go, right. we, we have this unnecessary problem where we have this accidental governor who can't do the job. Right. And, uh, we, we have somebody else, uh, Andrew Cuomo, who, sure. you know, and, it's and like, I don't know if you saw the VMAs when Kanye stepped in. Yeah. So this is kind of like this, uh, Obama goes, I'm sorry, <laughs> Andrew, I'm, I'm sorry, Dave, uh, I'm going to let you right. finish your term. But Andrew Cuomo had one of the best approval ratings that's, of that's all time. That's a nice uh, so, way to put it. Dan, uh, yeah. let me uh, get you in on this as well. Clearly, the White House knows that you look at the polls right now, Democrats are in a very vulnerable position come next uh, midterm elections, and so they'd like to stack the deck. Yeah, I think that's true. But I think some of this, in the case of uh, Governor Patterson, is actually personal. You know, Governor Patterson, uh, Governor Patterson rebuffed uh, President Obama's request for Caroline Kennedy to oh, fill right. uh, Senator uh, Clinton's seat last year. So you're saying payback? Well, I think also earlier this year, um, Patterson was on the radio waves talking about race being a uh, factor in the opposition both to him and to President Obama. Mm -hmm. And so I think that some of this, and you, you combine that with the low approval ratings of uh, Patterson, and I think it's, you know, no mystery why uh, Obama wants him out. However, I think this has backfired to some degree because now uh, we have a lot of Democrats talking about the racial politics of this, and this is what the Obama sure. uh, administration wanted to get beyond. Absolutely. Loretta. I think it's an example of Obama's inability to prioritize what's required for the job. He's still in campaign mode. He's not really governing. We have a $2 trillion deficit. We just heard that he has only talked to McChrystal once in 70 days, but he's managed to give over 120 speeches on health care. And this is a guy... Maybe the line was busy. He's not focused on what are the real critical issues of the day. Oh. And I think this is just another example of him jumping in on oh, small Peter. matters like the Gates situation. Peter, this, yeah, I, 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 I know you want to weigh in on this. Yeah, We're going to have to take a, a stack time the deck. Out. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, more with this, uh, this first ever uh, <laughs> little group of political pundits. Uh, in the widescreen edition, Yay. more in about two minutes. Meanwhile, President Clinton says there's a right-wing conspiracy to get President Obama. Hmm. The panel's going to take that one up next. And they don't just clean up neighborhoods, they protect them, too. Dozens of trash collectors fighting crime? You're going to meet two of them in about ten minutes. Stay with us. Uh, former President Bill Clinton speaking out this weekend and accusing Republicans of a... Get this, it's going to sound familiar, right-wing conspiracy, but this time against President Obama. Your wife famously talked about the vast right-wing conspiracy targeting you. As you look at this opposition on the right to President Obama, is it still there? Oh, you bet. Sure it is. It's not as strong as it was because America has changed demographically, but it's as virulent as it was. Really? So why is the Clinton conspiracy finger never pointed at the left, always at the right? We're back with our political panel. Lorena, what's going on here? I, I think there are fierce partisans on both sides of the mm -hmm. aisle, and I think folks just don't like to admit that. I think President Clinton is absolutely wrong, and I think what the, uh, the Democrats are doing is taking honest disagreements on policy issues, and they're trying to personalize them, and they're trying to say that there are reasons for it that are either racist or conspiracy-related, mm -hmm. and they're just flat-out wrong. And I think what we're beginning to see is it's almost as if uh, some of the left-wing extremists, they really think that they're the only folks who can be the authorities on race issues. No other side to any story. Exactly. And that gives the illusion that there's some kind of conspiracy. But it's really just partisanship. 
Mm. And sadly, the left wing is just as extreme. Is, is there a right wing conspiracy? I don't think it. I think if you saw during the Bush administration, you had folks who were, uh, you know, knee jerk, reflexively anti Bush, and it didn't matter. George yeah, Bush could have cured cancer, but and they would have called for investigation. Nobody ever showed up to one of Bill Clinton's rallies, I mean, to, uh, sorry, to George Bush's uh, uh, press uh, availabilities with a gun strapped to their leg. Um, I mean, I think what's happened is I, I don't like the fact that he's called it a right wing conspiracy because I don't, I don't, I agree with you. I don't believe in personalizing mm -hmm. disagreements, but you've seen an intense campaign since the summer to uh, plant things through repetition that are not true, like when Governor Palin put on her Facebook profile that the health care bill had death panels. You now have a situation, according to polling, objective polling, where 64 percent of Republicans either think that President Obama was not born in the U.S. or aren't sure. Where did they get that idea? It's not the people who are showing up to the town right, meetings. A, but, it's the but, leadership but wait, putting out these things saying that you're going to kill grandma. Peter, you're flat out wrong there. If you look at the actual legislation, if you look, for example, well, at like page 381 of the House HR 3200, you will see that there is an it's end, it. there is an end it, of life panel, an end of no, life, end of life be, counsolling, uh, a suggestion by a Republican Senator with a Isaacson panel that will was put determine in to reimburse doctors. Life. Hold on, hold on the, two, the two of you, that, that suddenly is health care. We've talked about that okay, at, at nausea, but we're talking no, about the right conspiracy, the right wing conspiracy, and we have not. Hold on, we haven't given old Dan a chance to talk. Yeah, well, I think that this actually kind of represents some trouble for the Obama administration because I think that this represents kind of the old fight club politics of the of the Clintons. And I think that last year's primaries was an attempt by the American voters to kind of put an end to that. And now here we are with those sharp edged politics by the Clintons back. And I think that President Obama's increasingly close relationships uh, with the Clintons has some upsides and has some downsides. And I think this is one of the downsides. It dredges up these old fight club politics that Americans wanted to get beyond. Mm -hmm. Obama campaigned on getting beyond. And that concludes our our Monday morning uh, fight club. Uh, Peter <laughs> and Dan and also Loretta, we thank you very much.